Hey everyone. So, when we're investing, it's so easy to get obsessed with one thing. Big returns, right? But here's the thing. Focusing only on returns is kind of like trying to drive a car while staring only at the speedometer. You're missing the whole picture. Today, we're going to talk about how to get that full view of the road and how looking beyond just the performance numbers can help you make way smarter choices with your money. All right, let's just jump right in with a classic head scratcher. Imagine you've got two different investments, and at the end of the year, they both made you the exact same return. I mean, down to the dollar. On paper, they look like twins. So how on earth do you choose which one was actually the better investment? If you're kind of scratching your head, don't worry, that's the point. The secret isn't in that final return number. It's all about the journey each one took to get there. And that journey I just mentioned, well, that's just a fancy way of talking about risk. And this leads us to the most important idea we're going to cover today. Returns by themselves just aren't everything. You know, a big juicy percentage on your account statement can look amazing, but it might be hiding a super stressful, dangerously volatile ride that gives you a ton of sleepless nights. It gives you a totally incomplete and honestly a pretty misleading picture of what's really going on. So the real story, the thing that separates, you know, okay investors from truly great ones is asking this one simple but super powerful question. How much risk did I have to take on to get this return? That's it. This whole idea is called risk-adjusted return. And trust me, it is an absolutely crucial tool if you're serious about growing your money without all the unnecessary drama and stress. Okay, so if we need to measure this risk-adjusted return thing, what's the tool we use? Well, for decades, the undisputed champion, the industry standard, has been something called the sharp ratio. You will see this thing everywhere, in pretty much every fund report, every analysis. And for good reason. When it first came out, it was a total game changer. So what does it do? At its heart, the Sharpe ratio is pretty simple. It measures how much return you got for the total amount of volatility you went through. And here is the absolute key thing to understand about it. It treats every price swing the same. So those amazing days when your portfolio shot up and those awful stomach turning days when it dropped, the Sharpe ratio lumps them all together and just calls it risk. But wait a second, do you really think those big upward spikes are risky? I mean, seriously, who's ever complained about making too much money too quickly? Nobody, right? And that's exactly where a more, let's say, intuitive alternative comes in, the Sortino Ratio. It refines the whole idea by measuring your return against only the bad volatility, you know, the downward price swings that actually cost you money. And this right here is the fundamental difference, the core argument between these two ways of looking at risk. The sharp ratios philosophy is that any deviation from the average, up or down, is risk. It's a symmetrical view. But the Sortino ratio, it thinks like a real investor. It says, hey, we don't fear our investments going up too fast. We fear losing money. And so it only penalizes the bad stuff, the downside volatility. Okay, so we get the philosophy, right? One penalizes everything, the other only penalizes the bad stuff. Now let's pop the hood and see how they're actually calculated. Because once you see the mechanics, it becomes super clear which one might be the smarter tool for what you're trying to do. The calculation for both is actually pretty simple. First, you take your historical returns. Step two, you subtract what's called the risk-free rate. Think of it as the return you could have gotten from something super safe, like a government bond, with basically zero risk. And then step three, this is where everything changes. This is the fork in the road. For the Sharpe ratio, you divide by something called standard deviation, which is just a fancy term for all the price swings, good and bad. But for the Sortino ratio, you only divide by the downside deviation, just the bad volatility. And that's it. You get a single number, and for both, the rule is easy. A higher number is a better number. And I want to be really clear, this isn't just some boring academic theory. These ratios are absolute workhorses in the real world of finance. I'm talking professionals use them every single day. They use them to compare mutual funds and hedge funds, to analyze new trading strategies, even to decide which multi-million dollar investment manager gets hired. It's serious stuff. All right, enough with the theory. Let's make this real. It's time for a head-to-head -head showdown. We're going to pit two portfolios against each other. And this simple little example is going to show you crystal clear how these two different ways of looking at risk can lead you to totally different conclusions about which investment is better. So here's the setup for our showdown. We've got portfolio A and portfolio B. Now look, they both gave a really nice 12% average return. The risk-free rate, let's say, was 2%. Here's the key difference. For portfolio A, we measured its total volatility, up and down, and that came out to 
But for Portfolio B, we only measured its downside volatility, and that was lower at just 8%. Okay, got it? Let's do the math. First up, Portfolio A, using the classic Sharpe ratio. So we take its 12% return, we subtract that 2% risk-free rate, which leaves us with 10%. Then we divide that by its total volatility, which was also 10%. 10 divided by 10 gives us a sharp ratio of exactly 1.0. Now that's a solid score. Anything over 1 is generally seen as pretty good. Okay, now for Portfolio B, we're going to use the Sortino ratio here. The first step is exactly the same. 12% return minus that 2% risk-free rate gives us 10%. But... This time, remember, we only divide by its downside volatility, which was just 8%. And look at this. The Sortino ratio comes out to 1.25. All of a sudden, by focusing only on the risk that we actually care about, the Sortino ratio shows us that Portfolio B was actually the much, much smarter, more efficient investment of the two. So this brings up the big question, which one should you use? And honestly, it all comes down to your personal philosophy. You should use the classic Sharp ratio if you're looking at things with really predictable, stable returns, or if you're just a purist who believes that any volatility, up or down, is risk. But if you're like most of us and your number one goal is protecting your money from losses, I'm talking about your retirement account, your life savings, then the Sortina ratio is going to give you a way more realistic and, frankly, a much more useful picture of what's going on. So if there's only one thing you take away from all this, let it be this. The sharp ratio is basically asking, how bumpy was the ride in general? It penalizes every single up and down swerve. But the Sortino ratio asks a much more human question. It asks, how many scary drops did we have to live through? It's laser focused on the thing we all actually care about, the risk of losing money. So the next time you're looking at an investment, please look past that big headline return number. Ask about the ride it took to get there. And that brings me to my final question for you. Thinking about your own goals, your own tolerance for stress, which ratio makes more sense for how you see things? Are you a sharp ratio person or a Sortino ratio person? Something to think about.